Now that we understand the idea behind use reducer, let's put it into practice. We will start with a simple example so we can get comfortable with the new pieces involved. Things like actions, dispatch, and the reducer function. We're going to rebuild a counter component, but this time using the use reducer hook. This is the perfect way to see how everything fits together. Back in VS Code, let's begin by creating a new file called counter with reducer.jsx. And we'll scaffold a simple component. Export const counter with reducer is equal to an arrow function, and we return counter. For this counter, we want to allow the user to perform three actions, increment, decrement, and reset. So let's set up the JSX with those buttons. First button, the text is increment. I'll duplicate this. The second button is decrement, and the third button is reset. Next, we need to display the count value, and that value will come from our component state. This is where the use reducer hook comes in. Let's import it at the top. Import use reducer from React. Just like you state, use reducer is a named export, and it's simply a function we call inside our component. Use reducer with parentheses. Now, if you recall the syntax from earlier, use reducer accepts two arguments a reducer function, and an initial state. We haven't defined either of these yet, so let's do that now. For our counter, the state will just be a number. So const initial state, and we'll start at zero. Next, let's define the reducer function. Const reducer is equal to an arrow function. Now this is a JavaScript function that takes two parameters, the current state, and an action describing what happened. The function must return the new state, which we will specify as a comment for now. So the reducer function accepts the current state and returns the new state. But for this state transition to happen, we need something to tell the reducer what kind of transition to make. That's exactly what the action parameter is for. Think of action as an instruction to the reducer function based on what the action specifies, the reducer performs the necessary state transition. For our counter component, we have three possible actions, increment, decrement, and reset. And the easiest pattern to handle multiple actions is a switch statement. So within the function body, we'll add a switch statement. The switch expression is the action, when the action is increment, so case, increment, the new state, will be the current state plus one. So return state plus one. When it is decrement, so case decrement, the new state will be the current state minus one. So return state minus one. And when it's reset, so case reset, the new state will be the initial state of zero. So return initial state. Let's also add a default case that simply returns the current state unchanged. So default return state unchanged. This handles any unknown actions. So this is the reducer function we will pass to use reducer. Based on the action value, it will either increment, decrement, or reset the counter. The final step is to get hold of the current count value to display in the JSX and a way to call the reducer function with the appropriate action. Luckily, this is exactly what use reducer returns. Similar to use state, use reducer returns a pair of values, which we can get hold of using array destructuring. So const array is equal to use reducer, and we get back what we can call count, which is the current state value, and dispatch which is a function we call to send actions to the reducer. All that's left is to display the count and wire up the click handlers. So add a paragraph tag that renders the count state value and a click handler for all the three buttons. On click is equal to an arrow function. We call dispatch, passing in the action. That will be increment for the increment button. Similarly, copy, paste it, dispatch decrement, 
If we reset, dispatch, reset. So each button dispatches a different action string and the reducer decides how to update the state based on that. Let's import this component into app.jsx and test it out. At the top, import counter with reducer from dot slash counter with reducer and invoke the component. Back in the browser, we see our counter component, click increment, the count goes up, click decrement, it goes down, click reset, back to zero. Let's trace through what happens when we click increment. When you click the increment button, the onClick handler calls the dispatch function with increment as the argument. React calls the reducer. It passes zero as the initial state value and increment string as the action. Reducer sees action is increment and returns zero plus one, which is equal to one. React updates the state to one, the component re-renders with the new count. Similar steps happen for decrement and reset as well. Now we did write a lot of code, so let's walk through the complete code one more time. We start by importing use reducer from React. Within the component, we call use reducer, passing in a reducer function and the initial state. The initial state is zero because that is where the count starts. The reducer function accepts the current state and an action, then returns the new state based on that action. If the action is increment, it returns state plus one. If it's decrement, it returns state minus one. If it's reset, it returns the initial state. And if an unknown action comes in, we return the state unchanged. Back to use reducer, it returns a pair of values. The current state value, which is called count in our example, and a dispatch method that accepts an action and triggers this reducer function. We use dispatch to send the appropriate action based on which button the user clicks. These actions trigger state transitions, the component re-renders and displays the updated counter value. Now a common convention you will see is the initial state being called initial count and the reducer function being called count reducer, named after the feature. Of course, you can use whichever naming makes the code clearer to you. But this example hopefully helps you understand the mechanics of use reducer. Actions describe what happened. Dispatch sends those actions to the reducer. The reducer decides how to update state. The component re-renders with the new state. All right, if this makes sense, we are ready to build our next example with use reducer, where the state will be a little more complex.